50 ways to leave your lover Dave what his favorite song was here in a second but just just for perspective's sake so if, if some of you are sitting there thinking oh, that music was so bad just keep this in mind five letters all right for this generation if any of you come back and speak to this series L M F A O okay so that just that's that's a little, little, little Kesha a little Snoop and the future generations will mock you as well so anyway with that ladies and gentlemen Mr. David Westberg the mic on. Uh, I'm the JV uh, soccer coach. Uh, freshmen, how many freshman boys do we have that are going to try out for soccer? Let's see the hands. You have 53 days to live. You better start running now because in 53 days you are mine and I'm going to be a bad dream. I'm going to be your worst nightmare. I'm going to run you till you puke. So now I've scared all the freshman boys to death. We'll keep going. I have one other thing to say. Tim Green I want the hat, you know, the pep band hat. I want the hat, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, so now that I've confused half of you and I've scared the freshman boys to death, I'll get started. Uh, this is me at Bellevue Christian. Uh, a couple, uh, 1976, uh, a couple things you can see is one uh, had really long hair. Uh, second is, I'll just tell you about when I was here. Uh, there was a teacher, young teacher, First year out of school by the name of Mr. Hibbard. Way easier then than he is now. You guys don't know how good I had it versus you. The second is there was another teacher that was an art teacher. He failed miserably in teaching me art because of, I'm not a good artist, but he taught me how to make mini pizzas. That's Charlie Brown, who is still around. But that just goes to show you how long I've been here. When I was here, uh, high school was a very easy time for me. Uh, I was a four-year starter in basketball, four-year starter in uh, soccer, I was student body president. I was a big fish in a small pond. High school, in many ways, wasn't a test. It was very, very easy for me. Um, what did I learn? One of the things I learned was, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. In, in Colossians, I remember Dewey Fredericks. I remember uh, 
Al Green drilling that into me. Whatever you do, do it as, as unto the Lord. And I want to talk a little bit about what that means. Um, I think we have a problem, a lot of us, and we, we compartmentalize our, our faith. We say, this is my faith. I do it in chapel. I do it on Sunday. This is the rest of my life. What does it mean? Whatever you do, that's what uh, Colossians says. Whatever you do. It doesn't say just what you do in chapel. It doesn't say just what you do Sunday. It says whatever you do. That means everything. Now, I want to talk, because I, I coach sports. I want to talk a little bit about uh, what it means to be a Christian and to apply uh, that verse in whatever you do. And I, and I really learned this lesson while I was here. Some of the coaches I, I had here. First of all, whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. You should, do, you should use your talents uh, and develop your talents as well as you can. That's a God-given gift. If you don't use it, God is disappointed. God is pleased. If you are a basketball player, get as good as you can. God says, that's a gift. I'm glad you're using it. If you're a soccer player, get as good as you can. You know, the boys on my team, they'll, they'll tell you, what gets Dave pissed? Lack of effort. Lack of talent, can't do much about. But lack of effort. If you are not trying 100%, you're gonna, I'm going to be all over you. Uh, so that's number one. God is pleased if we give 100%. Uh, and our sports team should always give 100%. God is pleased. That's the first thing. But the second thing, whatever you do, do is unto the Lord. What does that mean? What that means is when you compete, you treat your opponents as made in God's image. The opponent, the person that you're playing against, is made in God's image. Number 11, that player from uh, Cedar Park, that girl that was scoring like 85 points against us this week, that we double teamed and we still couldn't stop. She was so tall, she would like to reach her. She's made in God's image. Uh, the Cedar Park striker that says to Nathan Parsons, I'm going to dominate you, is made in, in, in God's image. And by the way, not, not, that did not happen, but, but uh, uh, he's made in God's image. The Overlake boys that come in hard, aggressive fouls because they're frustrated because we're clocking them, they're made in God's image. They're made in God's image. How you treat them is a witness. Um, this week... Uh, Raj was a beast Tuesday night, 16 points. He was huge, right? And Bryce, Bryce was a beast. Bryce was like, wait, have you ever seen one of the, like, you, you, ever, you ever try, you throw a ball against a wall, it comes back. Throw a ball against, well, he was doing that. He was like ejecting every single shot. They'd shoot, boom, come back, shoot, boom, come back. And I love that. Bryce was a beast ejecting shots. But I'm telling you, I saw Bryce do something earlier this year against Tonido that I appreciated even more. Hard fought game, hard fought game. He'd knock the player down. Reach down, pick the player up. That's treating a player as being made in God's image. Um, you know, we are no witness. Our teams are no witness if we're known as the kids that trip and scratch and pull shirts. We are no witness. We should be winning the Sportsmanship Award every single year. It should be us or Cedar Park fighting for that Sportsmanship Award. And I challenge you guys, win those awards. I challenge everyone here on sports teams, we should be winning those awards. Um, you know, uh, the second thing about how we treat our opponents is made in God's image. Gracious winners, gracious losers. This is my philosophy as a coach. I've never lost a four-goal lead. We have four goals. I don't need to make a 12, uh, so we don't run scores. Uh, the second thing is gracious losers. Uh, compliment the ref. Compliment the other team. You know, it's okay. If the other team has a great player to go up and say, you know, you were amazing. Sometimes our witness is more apparent in that than in what we say. I, I will tell you a story. Uh, I was coaching Steven's team and we got clocked. And I was frustrated. I was pissed. I thought we had played bad. Uh, and I'm, after the game, I'm really frustrated. And we pull into Jamba Juice. I'm going to get Jamba Juice for the kids. And I walk inside. Kay and the kids are outside. Inside is the player on the other team. That was the pain in our side the whole time. I, I didn't want to say anything. I, I, did, I wanted to just leave. I thought, oh, I can't deal with this. The kids there walk up to him and say, you know, you were amazing. You played a great game. You're, you're a very, very fine soccer player. Now, what I didn't know is, while I'm doing that, Kay's outside in the car with the kids, and she says, now watch what your father's going to do. He's going to walk up and say that to that kid, you played great. Now, if I had not done that, what kind of a witness would I have been? 
all my words would be saying one thing and my actions would do another. So sometimes, particularly with respect to losing, how we lose is more of a witness uh, than what our words have been. You know, a lot of people say, well, that's fine. You can be that way, but you won't win. You have to, to compete at a certain level. You have to do what it takes. You have to play the game. If everyone pushes, we push. If everyone grabs shirts, we grab shirts. That's a crock. Uh, my boys' teams were 24-9-5 last year. 24-9-5. Uh, the boys' JV team was 8-2-2. Two two. Those, those boys' teams got one yellow card. That was a kid that uh, ran his mouth off at a ref. One yellow card. Uh, in fact, my boys' U17 team, that was the very first yellow card they've ever gotten, and they win eight, about 75% of their games. So uh, that's one example. Another example is, if you know anything about uh, NCAA Division III soccer, it's been dominated by two schools, Wheaton uh, and Messiah College. I'll tell you about Wheaton. The Wheaton coach, uh, it's a Christian school, the Wheaton coach was in a playoff game, and after the game, he heard his goalie say to one of the defenders, you know, uh, they, they scored a goal. It went in through the side of the net. No one saw it but me. The coach said, whoa, 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 what did you just say? And, and so the guy told him, and, he, and the coach said, okay, fine, thanks. He called the opposing team, and he said, you know, we're going to play our playoff game over because you tied that game. The other coach said, oh, don't worry about it. The, the ref didn't see it. Don't worry about it. We'll let it go. And then, and then the Wheaton coach said, no, no, no. We play tomorrow. We will come to your place. We will play that game because we won unfairly. Now, if I'm the coach for that other team, what do I think about Christians when I hear that? What do I think about Christians? Uh, I'll give you another example. Messiah College. The boys' team has won like eight of the last 12 championships. The girls' team's won three of four. They win, but this is the way they are. Hard-fought game against their arch rivals, uh, and Messiah wins in the very last minute. The other players are heartbroken, and, and they're, they're just, you know, they can't believe they've lost. What do the Messiah guys do? Do they go taunt them and say, look at this, we won, you didn't? No. Immediately they go over to the other team and say, great job. You guys should be proud of yourselves. You've pushed us to the limit. Uh, so if anyone tells you you have to do what it takes to win, forget it. Because, there's, there, because you, winning isn't everything, but there's ways to win and also be a good Christian witness. Uh, so, and, and I admit, you know, no one's perfect. I struggle with this like everybody else. I used to play indoor, and um, I, I took a season off indoor because I felt like it was, I was getting too intense, and I wasn't, I, I, I was maybe not acting in the good ways that are a good witness. So, I'll just tell you, everyone will struggle with this. Uh, I do too, like everybody else. I'm not perfect. But we hold ourselves, uh, each other, we can help encourage each other and hold each other accountable. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the second thing I, uh, that I learned when I was here was uh, Bible memory. I can remember Dewey Fredericks in eighth grade made us memorize a verse a week. Much of the scripture that I know that I rely on, I learned when I was here uh, in Bible memory. And I, wanna, uh, I want to challenge you right now to memorize a verse. Uh, the verse I want us to memorize is Psalm 48.8. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. He is speaking peace to his faithful people, to those who turn their hearts to him. Uh, Druzer, finish the verse. I will listen, how, finish the verse. Hearts to him. Karn. Uh, yeah, and to those who turn their hearts to him. Chandler. Look, at everyone's going like this. Oh, no. <laughs> His faithful people. Good. Jonah. I will hear what the Lord God is saying. And Someone help him, Dan, help him. For he is speaking peace to his people, to those who turn their hearts to him. Okay, let's all say it. I will listen to what. Cause, 
for he's speaking peace to his faithful people, to those who turn their hearts to him. Okay, what does God do here? He speaks peace to his faithful people. He speaks peace. Doesn't solve problems. He speaks peace. Uh, I'll continue with my story. This is me in college. Went to Pacific Lutheran, uh, captained the team, all conference, played against some guys that went on to play uh, in the pros. I'm there in the middle. Yes, we wore short shorts. Uh, and yes, we did not wear shin guards if we didn't feel like it back then, and I have a hole in my leg to uh, prove it. Uh, I had the pretty requisite pretty girlfriend. Life was pretty easy for me. Uh, and then after college, I went off to uh, Eagleton Institute. I had a full ride, two years, and they paid me a stipend. I thought I was going to study state government, and get out, and be the next governor of the state of Washington. Uh, Life was pretty great. Well, all my friends went through this funky, weird two or three years after college. What am I going to do? One of my friends totaled his friend's car uh, down at uh, the racetrack down in uh, Spanaway. One of my other friends, like, sailed all around trying to decide what he wanted to do. Uh, I was really focused, and I loved that. I was so focused. I knew what I wanted to do. All, all my friends were all messed up. Uh, it, <laughs> I went back there for two years, studied state government, uh, and then smash, then smash. A couple things happen. Number one, I'm back there studying state government. I realize I don't want to do it. I realize I don't want to go into government. Uh, second, a 10-12-12 economy. Everyone's upset right now because we have a 9-3-3 economy. 9% unemployment, 3% inflation, 3% interest rates. When I got out in 1980, it was 10% unemployment, 12% inflation, 20% interest rates. The economy was a mess. Uh, I had 65, I, kept, I, I kept, kept track, I had 65 interviews and no job. It got to be a game. I got to see how many interviews I could see. I, I was finalist three times, finalist three times, didn't get the job. I, I went down, I actually interviewed with Governor Spellman down in Olympia. He wanted me to, to hire and be his uh, staff assistant. On Friday, he said, Dave, great, met all the people. Come back Monday, come to work for me on Sunday. Seattle Times writes an article, when is a hiring freeze not a freeze? The governor's hiring staff in the middle of a state hiring freeze. And I thought, there goes that job. And sure enough, Monday I get a call, no job for you, Dave. So 65 interviews and no job. And for someone who is so career focused, so accomplishment focused, maybe a little too much so, that was hard for me. People would say, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm living at home, I don't have a job. Oh, oh okay, that's good. Loser. Uh, for someone who's so accomplishment focused, that was incredibly difficult. Uh, then the final piece that happened was my dad's health. Uh, my dad's had Crohn's disease, which is a fancy word for saying the plumbing doesn't work, intestines don't, don't work. Um, and he was getting medicine for the Crohn's disease. And the medicine, he, we didn't know at the time, but he was having an allergic reaction to. So he would take the medicine, it wasn't helping, so what did the doctor say? Double it. So he doubled the dose. And that would make him worse. So they doubled again. Uh, and I remember one night when it reached the bottom, uh, was what got, got its worst. I was downstairs. My mom said, Dave, get up here. Call me upstairs. My dad had completely lost all, uh, you know, gone to the bathroom all over the bed. He's shaking. He's in a seizure. And I had to pick my dad up in my arms, carry him up to the car, and rush him to the hospital. Now, Riley's dad's a big man. Riley, think about, and everyone, you guys, think about your dad. That image of your dad in your life, what he means to you. The rock, big guy. What if, Riley, you had to pick your dad up? That would be hard. Yeah. What if you had to pick your dad up, carry him in your arms like a baby, upstairs, so you could rush to the hospital, try, and the docs could try and save his life? That was where I was. That was where I was. And I, I will tell you, I didn't have anything to hang on to but this verse. I have no job. I don't know if my dad's going to live. My girlfriend married someone else while I was at college, but that's just a minor thing compared to everything else. But, <laughs> but that, was, that verse was all I had to hang on to. God will speak peace to his faithful people, to those whose hearts are set on him. What does the verse say? Did I have a job? No. Did God give me a job? No. Did I have a girlfriend? No. Did God give me a girlfriend right then? No. Uh, 
did, I, did my dad have his health? No. But I had peace. I'm not saying it was easy. I'm not saying I was happy. But I had God's peace. So if I could, if I could, uh, yeah, I love this. Matt, where's Max M? Where's Max M, my goal? We always say I have a word. Max has this great phrase, learning moment, learning moment. Okay, so in the words of Max M, learning moment, learning moment. God doesn't remove problems. He gives you peace. God doesn't remove your problems. He gives you peace. Okay, so <clears throat> that's kind of the, uh, the, the, the uh, first thing. P put it together, I resume life. I get admitted to University of Chicago, where maybe Stephen will be going. I don't know. Uh, uh, to study business. You know what his dad thinks, at least. Uh, uh, and then uh, on a blind date, I, I meet the lovely and talented Mrs. Westbrook. Blind dates are good, I will tell you all, because I met her. Three months later, we did this. And the, and the rest has been, I can't tell you how lucky I've been to, to have her in my life. I can't tell you how lucky I've been to have her in my life. Uh, let's just say the West, in Westbrook genetic, the brains and looks in the Westbrook genetics uh, went way up, went way up with this single event, okay? Uh, I, I want to tell you another story, another something I, that I've learned uh, since uh, high school. And, but, but long story, so Mary, this beautiful woman, way too good for me, uh, become a banker, start my own business, run my own business, and I still struggle trying in my business to say, how can I as a Christian be salt and light and apply what I've learned in my business? But I'll tell you a little story about Dave in middle school, Sunday school. I love to make big pronouncements that make me look like an idiot later. I said to my wife, hey, we've been married. It's time for us to serve God. It's time for us to serve God and to work in church. What I had in mind was I would like work with college and career, you know, graduate degree, college and career. We discuss big books, you know, discuss Augustine and the big books and stuff. So we go to the church, go to the church pastor and say, okay, I'm here to help. God's gift to the college and career. And the pastor says, no, 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 don't need that. We need someone to work with middle school. And I go, huh? Oh, I don't know how middle school kids think they're weird. They're like, don't give any feedback, okay? The boys can't complete a sentence, right? This is weird. I can't do this. Now, I could have, how many here, and I'm really dating my, how many here have seen Demented Cartoon Movie? Demented Cartoon Movie. Uh, there's this little scene in Demented Cartoon Movie. Been there, done that. Uh, yeah, yeah, long ago. There's this little scene where there's this guy, and the voice says, uh, steer. And the guy says, I don't want to. Says, do you want to crash? The voice, not really. Then steer. But I'm not good at that. And they go through this endless loop. That's what they play again and again. Steer. I don't want to. Do you want to crash? Not really. Then steer. But I'm not good at that. Now, I could have said to God, I'm not good at that. I don't know how these people think. These, these little kids, I don't know how they think, how they act. And, and all I can tell you is I said yes, and I thought, oh, what a mess this is going to be. And did that for 15 years, probably the richest experience of my life, is working with kids, telling them about Jesus. There were things in me, skills that I had, I had no idea I had until I did it. In fact, it's probably fair to say I would not be here speaking, I'd be scared of, would not be here speaking this morning unless I'd do, done that. So, learning moment number two, learning moment number two, when God says do something, don't say, oh, I'm not good at that. Uh, God can use you. There's things that he wants you to do. If you do, you'll, you, you'll have no idea the blessings, uh, the blessings that you'll get uh, when you do stuff. So those are uh, maybe a couple things uh, that I've learned. I always like to open it up, turn it back to you guys. Uh, give me, there's two, three things we learned this morning. Give me one of the three, somebody. Glenn, the amazing drummer. Give me one thing. What did you learn this morning? You're a great drummer, by the way. It's fun. You pep band. You guys rock. Huh? You learn verses, okay? See if you can remember it. What is it? <laughs> Lord speaks peace to his people, to those whose hearts are set on, on him. What, what are, uh, let's go. Uh, Kali, give me something. What did you learn? We learned three things. Yeah, God won't solve your problems. He'll give you peace. That's one. 
Somebody else, give me something else. Yeah. Austin, great. Whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Try and work that out. That means when you play soccer, you do it as for the Lord. That means when you play basketball, it means you do it as for the Lord. That means if you're in a pep band, you do it as for the Lord. Thank you, Austin. Uh, and uh, one more. What else? One other lesson. Yeah. Yeah. When God says do this, don't say, I'm not good at that. Say, okay, here I am. Send me. Just like Samuel. Uh, great. Uh, uh, so what we learn, uh, lesson one, God doesn't raise problems. He gives you peace. Lesson two, when God says do something, don't say, I'm not good at that. Uh, let's go, uh, Mike, we can go. That's, that's it. We can open it up if people what, have questions. What was something in high school that you thought you were really good at and it turns out that you realized not so much? Like kind of what, how did you have to get over yourself after high school, particularly since high school was pretty, uh, pretty easy for yeah, you? Yeah, it was probably, uh, high school was pretty easy. I think when I, I was really felt I, I accomplished a lot and I probably looked down on kids that were, I thought were slackers. Life was pretty easy. I was very focused. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I did it. it was the wrong thing. And so I had no, I had no patience with someone that uh, didn't know what they wanted to do. And, and, you know, God, some people, God, God will have a calling and a vision for each of you. Some of them, you're gonna, some of you are going to know right away. Some of you, it's going to take a little while, be a little path to get there. And I wish I'd had a little more patience with people who'd taken a little bit longer to get where they were going. What's the single biggest thing you've learned about God as an adult? Oh, man. Uh, single biggest thing I've learned about God. Uh, I, I will tell you, it's that your faith will change in ways that you never even thought possible. Things that you just say, uh, uh, you know, I, I think... I, I think you'll find, uh, I don't know, what, that's, a, that's a hard question. What would be the biggest single? I, I will tell you my faith in many ways. Uh, I've learned uh, and I've acted in certain ways. I, I was always a rather unsentimental person in, uh, when I was in high school. And I, God in many ways has called, my call has been calling me to compassion ever since. Um, and so I, I will tell you, I've learned a lot. I've learned how compassionate God is, how compassionate Jesus has been. That's probably been uh, pretty important to me. Um, I don't know. The other thing I continually am learning is I've got to be humble. That, that about the time I feel really good about myself and about my faith, I'll mess up and uh, I'll be humble. I, I just got to be humble, really humble. Yeah. Biggest piece of advice for seniors moving forward into the college years and then the freshman, sophomore, juniors kind of looking ahead. Oh, huge. Ahead. Uh, I'll tell you the biggest thing for seniors from a standpoint of your faith is get into an accountability group. You know, they did a study. There was a guy who did a study that said, do Christians act different from non-Christians? And uh, George Barna. And he found basically Christians, people who say they're Christians, didn't really act that much different from non-Christians in terms of do they steal, do they lie, do they sleep around when they're not supposed to? But there was one group of Christians that acted way different. Acted way different. It was Christians who were in small accountability groups. Get in an accountability group. If you're in college, get in a Bible study with three or four or five guys. Get in a Bible study where you're talking about the Bible and you're saying, pray for me. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm in an accountability group. with some. I travel constantly for work. I'm going to be gone next week all week. I have a group of guys, a small group. And I will tell you what I'll say. I'll say to them, guys, I'm gone next week. Pray for me when I'm by myself sitting in a hotel room. X-rated movies are one click of the button away. Pray for me that I stay pure. And I'll just tell you, I know Dave. The fact that I got to see those guys when I get back means I act completely different uh, than, the, than if I did not have a group saying, Dave, how you doing? How'd you do last week? So get in an accountability group. That's advice for, for uh, all of you when you get to college. If you don't, you're, it's going to be much harder to live a consistent faith. Dave, I just want to say that the Westbergs were a blessing to me when I came here in 1963. And I believe it's you and how many brothers and sisters? Uh, there are six of us, five. Uh, you're all were on my bus route. Yeah. 
and we Charlie Brown out. was our bus driver, yeah. And I want you to know that he <laughs> had supportive parents yeah. who <laughs> took all their artwork, we, uh, it, lesson after lesson, yeah. and their entire hallway was lined from the yeah. ceiling to the floor with artwork forever and ever. Yep. But well, you were a blessing. Thank you, thank you. All right, hey, thank you, give them a hand. Yeah. That was great. That was great. I will pray us out, and then uh, you can hang out a little bit. All right. Lord, thank you for the words of Dave. Thank you for uh, his story uh, and uh, his willingness to come tell it. Uh, may we leave here with something tangible, Lord, that brings us closer to you, helps us to live more authentically for you, whatever our life stage is and wherever that may take place, whatever platform that is, whether that's athletics or academics or uh, our friendships. Uh, for those that need that accountability, give them the courage, Lord, to initiate that with somebody or to get into a small group. Uh, Lord, help us take steps and not leave here uh, the same way we came in. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you that you are the good news and that you came to save us because of who you are. In your name, amen. All right, free to hang out.